Have you ever been diagnosed schizophrenic? You may not be schizophrenic. You may be experiencing generational satanic ritual abuse. Think about it. You didn't go through ritual abuse yourself, but you have all these symptoms of someone who did. I'm going to talk about it more in this episode. Hi, I'm Joy with Breaking Curses 101, and welcome to my channel. It's like stepping into the twilight zone, which is why my life will never be normal again, because, boy, <laughs> nobody's really normal. Everybody's just faking it, okay? So this woman came to me. Oh, wait, first. Wait, 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 wait. Spur! Like this video right now. Don't wait. Just like the video. Please subscribe to my channel and share this video. I'm sure you have at least one friend that experiences this. Or maybe you just got rid of all those people. But everybody's got one crazy friend. <laughs> um, you may be that crazy friend for people. But my point is um, people are going through it today. And the cool thing about social media today is that we can share our experiences. That's why everybody thinks it's cool to have a therapist these days. But is your therapist godly? Does your therapist know how to cast out demons? Anyway, I'm going to tell you about a woman who came to me with really, really bad sleep patterns. She can't sleep at night. She can't really sleep till daybreak. It's kind of a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde kind of thing. Um, she says her brain doesn't really function, probably because she can't sleep. Um, she hears voices in her head and um, she's just doing everything she can to try to live a normal life. She, held, she holds down a job. But she could do so much more if she could sleep at night, if she wasn't had all this stuff going on in her head. So I helped her dig into the problem. I'm going to do everything I can not to disclose her identity in any way, shape, or form. But you can probably relate to some of these symptoms. So maybe I'm talking about you. All right, so... When I started this session, she kept hearing that she was like the spirit spouse who claims her as a wife is Samuel Smith. He came in in 1192 and he considered himself a pharaoh. I mean, I figured she was dealing with some kind of pharaoh because it's, she attracts narcissists. And so the pharaohs are narcissists. So I called up the pharaoh first and then boom, Samuel Smith showed up. She is his spirit spouse. He has sacrificed 11 million children. 11 million. So this principality is claiming all this blood. And then she hears the name Pharaoh Carolina. She said, Pharaoh left, I'm here. I mean, this this, this session was so choppy because she was all over the place. Uh, 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 uh. I was like, reel it in, reel it in. Um, she kept seeing, she kept hearing 27 children in crates. Then she heard 17 million children in crates. They were all sacrificed to mammon and drowned in the Nile River. Now, I believe that because people 
didn't do abortions the way they do today. They carried those babies to term and sacrificed them. And then they got pregnant again, carried them to term, sacrificed them. They were always burning babies, drowning babies, doing everything to babies. Egyptians did not want their babies. Um, she definitely has Egyptian ancestry. So this spirit said, this principality said it made the temple and put the children in the temple and then paralyzed them with fear. She kept hearing paralyzing fear, paralyzing fear, paralyzing fear. So I started to put things together. I mean, it was all over the place. I started to put things together. And remember Pizzagate, satanic ritual abuse of children, they would torture the children, um, just make them extremely, extremely afraid, and then bump the children off. I don't want to say the K word too much because of, the, because of this video. They would bump the children off and then drink their blood. It's called adrenochrome. And it gives them powers. It gives them youth. It's basically sucking the life out of the children. Well, apparently this woman is in the bloodline where these pharaohs did that and drank this blood. So I, I'm going to try my best to read through this. This is a wild session. And I'm talking about it a week later because it was all over the place. So it's not going to make the normal chron chronological sense that the other videos made. So I apologize in advance. Um, so these demons, um, they were called righteousness. <laughs> righteousness. Interesting. I'll connect that later. And Mammon, she also heard something called 666 in there. Like they were all of these demons were all in there. And so they, they're basically feeding off of all these child sacrifices. The millions of children that were killed in Egypt and in other places. So they said they're located in her temples. It fires her brain. I'm just reading my notes, which are all over the place. But but you're going to be able to put this together and know what I'm talking about. This thing, these this these traumatic events, this trauma collapsed her circadian rhythm. The circadian rhythm is the ability is the body's clock, and is affected by sunset. And sunrise. I mean, sunrise. Yeah, sunrise and sunset. So when your eyes are closed, light can get through there and it triggers something. It makes you wake up. And then it, all the other body functions start to kick in. All of your, all of your organs and your, the systems of your body are on a clock. And that clock is managed by the pituitary, I'm sorry, by the pineal gland. And this, and this is called your circadian rhythm. So basically, she had a maze in her head. There was no straight line to anything. It said part of her brain is missing. Samuel Smith put it in an envelope. It says her brain is 666. Elijah's mother is in her brain. It erased great parts of her brain. All right, so this is what I'm hearing at the beginning of the session, right? It gets crazier from here. Hold on. Stay to the end. So her brain carries fragments of 1100 million children because they used to drink the blood of the children. These pharaohs, they drank that blood regularly. Okay. Kind of like when um, 
H-I-L-L-A-R-Y-C-L-I-N-T-O-N showed up in one of my sessions with O-B-A-M-A and it showed that she was putting blood in the champagne and serving it at these dinners. Last time I said something about her, they took my video down. So I'm not going, I'm just going to spell her name out. So, woo. The, and then, okay, it said that her brain carries the fragments of 1,100 million children. They ate the brains of these children. Now, Egyptians ate the brains. I've been hearing that a lot these days. They were brain eaters. They thought it was going to give them wisdom. Stupid. Just stupid. So they would take the brains and soak it in paralyzing fears. Then we eat it. So it sounds like to me, they would take the brains out and they would soak it in the adrenochrome, which is the blood that came out of the, the children, and then they would eat it. Wow. Sometimes they ate the children due to starvation. I'm seeing that a lot now. Uh, cannibalism is coming up a lot. So all of y'all who are on my channel, who are being tormented, you probably got some of that in your ancestry. All right? Um, Legion was there. But then it got crazy. Delilah showed up. Delilah says she was also Samuel Smith's girlfriend. There were 12 girlfriends. Anyway, there was a lot of girlfriends. Samuel Smith had a lot of girlfriends. And they started talking. And she kept hearing, got to get rid of the girlfriends. Got to get rid of the girlfriends. Like the girlfriends are talking in her head. There was Cherie, there was Tabitha, there was Macy, there was Gracious, um, Righteous, I think. And um, anyway, there were 12 rings. They made Delilah luscious and divine. And how did the girlfriends get in this woman's head? What did Samuel Smith do to his girlfriends? The same thing you heard about in my other videos. Samuel Smith was sacrificing his girlfriends. He was drilling a hole in their head, sucking out their brains and eating their brains for power. I have heard, I've been hearing that for at least a year. It's coming up in these people's sessions. Native Americans, uh, Mexican Americans, uh, Latinas, and now this woman from the Middle East. So her ancestry is like Middle Eastern. So, woo, Pharaoh wanted to be admired. Mm. I heard this before. When the guy wanted the power to drop a woman's draw, sexual power, like the Latin lover power. They had to eat the brains of the woman and her female organs. And that gave them sexual power to get any woman they wanted. So here we go. She's suffering the trauma from that happening in the ancestry. So this Pharaoh said he didn't have a good brain, so he wanted more. Okay, what did it do to her? She can't do anything. Like, she can't accomplish what she wants. She's stuck at these low-level jobs. Basically, just looking cute. Uh, helps. It helps when you look cute. So, uh, it said that her brain is in the mammon crate. So she's missing soul fragments of her brain. It's in the mammon crate. And 
her brain is in the Pharisees. I I can't even under, I don't even understand. Like I was writing and then I would stop. Then I write a little. Then I was like, forget it. Just forget it. I I, I can't even keep up with this session. So I just tried to get as much as I could. But so girlfriend number one was sacrificed, brain eaten. Girlfriend number two, her name was Sharon. She was sacrificed in the crate. Girlfriend number three. Um, yeah. All these girlfriends. So the girlfriends, they were in her head because her ancestors ate them. They ate the brains of women. That's how you know you Egyptian. You got all this stuff going on. Okay. And if I wasn't trying to fight this stuff, I wouldn't even be doing this level of deliverance. You know, I, don't, I don't know why you don't hear. I need to stop saying that. Why isn't anybody else talking about this? Why do I keep running into this? Where is everybody else? Where are all these big cheese deliverance ministers that you hear about and nobody's talking about this? Them brain-eating cannibal. Oh, man, they, eat, they ate some of the girlfriends alive. Like, what? I mean, like, it gets worse and worse and worse. I don't think it can get any worse than cannibalism. Anyway, so this was interesting. It said that it connected to her bloodline, like her, her father helped perpetuate this because he wanted to be rich and famous and sacrificed her to Baal with his mouth like he it was something he said before she was ever even born so anyway but this was interesting the irish pride of her bloodline came up and it was a sect named after the irish side of the family so just take irish name sect S-E-C-T. Them Irish people. Woo-wee. Everybody got their brand of nasty. But the Irish people want to be seen as good and righteous and pure. If you're Irish, let me know if I'm right. Let me know if I'm wrong. But there's this thing where you, you have to appear good. And even though... <laughs> I talked to a friend yesterday and she said she was in Ireland as on a layover and the woman yeah you know, she was keeping her voice level but she was angry but she was trying to look like she was being professional and nice but she had this leprechaun grin behind her like and you could tell it it was evil there but she wanted to appear as if she was good. <laughs> so this woman had that. And what happened in her bloodline was uh, on the Irish side. 12 million babies were sacrificed. 12 million. Now, since Roe versus Wade in 1970, what, 1972 or something like that, 75 million babies have been sacrificed in the United States on record. That's not even all the other children. That doesn't include the other children that were sacrificed off record, you know, who did the at home abortions and and drank cyanide and, and all kind of different stuff just to cause their babies to come out early. But we have on record over 75 million babies, and that's just since 1972. That's not even a hundred years. So you go back a thousand years? Yeah, it's easy to come up with 12 million babies <clears throat> that were that need that were sacrificed. So anyway, I'm gonna stop there. She's not a baby killer. You know what I'm saying? She's not going around sacrificing children, she's not eating people's brains. But yet she's suffering the trauma of people who did. 
okay? And like I don't I don't remember her having any abortions or miscarriages. Let's say let's say she did. We get rid of that when you first come into the ministry through the baby dedications. So where are all these other torments and traumas coming from? It's got to be from her ancestry. And that's what they did. They sacrificed babies. If we could sacrifice in America 75 million babies in less than 100 years, what have they done? In 2,000 years, in 4,000 years, in 6,000 years. I'm going to stop there. If you are a victim of satanic ritual abuse, just know that you can live a normal life. Deliverance comes in layers and you can't stop. You just got to keep going until you get all of your soul fragments back into you. And you release all the other soul fragments that don't belong and, and send them where they belong. All right. So like, comment, subscribe to this channel, share this video. Please put in the comments um, anything that stood out in this video to you. I want to hear from you. I'm going to correspond with you through the comments. And also, I'll have a Facebook group if you want to join that. And if you want, get on my mailing list so that you can um, be informed of the next event, which is coming up soon. So I'll see you in the next video. Start your deliverance journey today with the Breaking Curses One-on-One School of Deliverance. You can get delivered in the privacy of your own home. We've served over 6,000 people since 2016. So check out my link in the description below to take my free course to get started.